Hey everybody, so I wanted to talk to you about Bitcoin. I've actually ran across quite a few people that don't know much about Bitcoin and when I bring it up to them, it's, I just want to kind of hear what they have to say about it because I'm sure that's what the general masses think about it. So when I ask people, well, why don't you like Bitcoin, I normally hear things like, well, you know, it's a bubble, it's already popped, you know, there's nothing backing it, it's just internet money. Um, you know, all, all sorts of uh, all sorts of things like that. It's just a fad, you know, and uh, and that stuff is just <laughs> insane to me. It's like, ah! <laughs> well, I'm here to tell you that's wrong. So, um, first of all, let me let me kind of talk to you a little bit why you want Bitcoin to succeed. Now, unless you're like the one percent, I can understand, or you know, you own a bank, or you're, you know, there's certain situations I could see why you wouldn't want Bitcoin to succeed. But for the most case, you I would assume you'd absolutely want Bitcoin to succeed. So let's just talk about the current financial system, um, just just when it comes to banks. Now Bitcoin can do so much more than financial systems, but since it was launched as a financial system, let's talk about that. So first of all, uh, if you were to if you were to transfer money um, from here to Mexico, it, it not only would it cost you. Well, first of all, you can't, I mean, sending under $20 is almost, you know, it costs 20 bucks to send $100 if you were to send it through MoneyGram or the Western Union. Um, and even when you go to those sites and they tell you they can transfer it overnight, there's a catch to it. You have to sign up for something. It's a one-time thing, something like that. Um, or they just straight up lie to you and you finally get there and you find out, oh, it's one to three days. Um, it's legitly quicker to take the money and fly it down there than it would to transfer it. Um, and that's not right. Um, uh, second of all, um, the interest rate. You, you shouldn't be spending, you know, um, upward. You, know, you shouldn't be spending 20 percent. You know, 10 percent. You shouldn't even be spending one percent to transfer your own money. Um, that's a big problem as well. Uh, unless you're 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 on the same bank account or you share the same bank and you or you've linked your accounts or you do something like that um, preemptively, it's an issue. Um, also, banks make money off of your money, so they're holding your money. Essentially, you're saying, you know, essentially you're not responsible enough to hold your own money, so they're going to hold your own money for you, and as payment, they're going to use your money to make more money. And and the way the banks do money, I'm not even going to go into that, but they just create money out of thin air, and it's just ridiculous. Um, also, inflation. Inflation is huge. Inflation is always happening. It happens with every country. I mean, even countries like Venezuela with their hyperinflation. I mean, you have to carry a, a bucket of cash just to get a milk or a loaf of bread or something like that. So, I mean, I hope... <laughs> I mean, geez, they, they, um, the banks also monitor your spending habits. The banks can also shut, shut off your money. The, 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 the government can dip into your bank account and take your money without you. Have you ever seen Pursuit of Happiness? Um, he almost, you know, he, he watched Pursuit of Happiness. He lost all of his money um, he, he gathered um, due to the government because of back taxes and whatnot. So um, they, they also require knowledge of how you're using your money. Now there are some, you know, I understand KYC, some of the rules make sense when it comes to, you know, not wanting bad money to go to bad places, but um, the, the whole system is just broken. So I, I hope that you, you look at that and you, you understand that that's not how it should be. I mean, if you think that's how in 2019, 20, that's how our financial system should be, you know, one to three days, um, you know, fees and you're not in control of your own money. If that's your jam, then 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 Bitcoin's not for you. Um, that being said, if that if that is not your jam and you think there's a better way, that that's why Bitcoin was created. So um, here's why you want Bitcoin to succeed. Uh, first of all, there's only a finite amount of Bitcoin, 21 million. After that 21 million Bitcoin, um, there, I mean, there's no more. So there's no inflation that could take place, and it's, it's a locked amount, and no one can create money out of thin air the way that it's created. It's also completely safe. Um, no one has ever um, hacked into a Bitcoin wallet before. Um, it can happen if you... There are situations where you can... Um, essentially double spend money but you're not creating it out of nowhere um, it's essentially uh, something that's being worked on so um, 
for, for let me take another step back. <clears throat> Bitcoin just got created. Okay, so um, uh, I don't know if you remember um, back in 2008, hopefully <laughs> the people watching this will remember 2008, but when that financial crash happened, that's actually why Bitcoin was created, was because of that financial crash. So this Satoshi Nakamoto, no one knows who he, she, they are. Um, people have claimed that they're that person, but um, essentially they created Bitcoin to get out of the bank financial systems. I mean, you, you find instances where like HBC is funding terrorism and they're caught and they admit that they were doing it and then they just get a fine and no one gets put to jail. I mean, that has to stop, right? And you hear about it all the time. In 2008, no one went to jail. The government just bailed everybody out and gave them more money for all the money they lost from Americans. It's just mind-blowing. That is not okay. So when Bitcoin was created, it was created as a as a response to that. So here's what why Bitcoin was created. First of all, you can send money instantly. So um, I can send money to somebody in Africa right now. Um, people have sent. Um, you can look online. People have sent you know millions, you know tens of millions, hundreds of millions with pennies on you know fees. I think you know. Uh, um, Litecoin sent like 99 million was charged like 47 cents or 7 cents or something crazy like that. I mean, a ridiculous fee, even if it was five bucks or, you know, a hundred dollars, like that's still a thousand dollars. That's still way under what it would be cost if you were to, you know, shoot it across border to border. Um, so you can send money instantly and there's no fees or very, very, very little fees. Um, also, nobody can take your money away from you. So the government can't hop into your Bitcoin wallet and take your money. Uh, they can, you know, the government can put you in jail. They can say, give me that money or else, you know, but they, they, the only way they can actually get the money from you is if you willingly give it to them. Um, you have to essentially give them your private keys. Um, think of Bitcoin like an email address that, you know, you, the government has your email address, they just want your password, and unless you give them that password, they're not going to be able to access your email or your Bitcoins or, or whatever. Um, and then, yeah, no inflation. 21 million coins. And uh, um, there's a system ca you know, called mining where they're slowly releasing coins over the next hundred so or so years. Um, and you can look into that later, but um, there is technology behind this that, that's helping it grow. Um, also, so far, it's the most secure way to hold money. Uh, a Bitcoin wallet has never been hacked before, um, and no one's uh, Bitcoins have ever been stolen before. Um, and the technology is very, very new. Like I said, it just got created in 2008. So um, you will see this technology advance more and more. I mean, uh, it was like 1963, 68, I don't know, when the first internet was, was uh was created and then the first tests happened in the you know, late 70s and then 80s it wasn't until the 90s that the internet came came about and for the last for the 30 years before and even in the 90s people were saying the internet was a fad it was just you know people were using it illegally to do shady stuff and and that's how bitcoin is being portrayed right now and hey it may go down and it may it may crash and burn there's nothing saying that this i'm not saying that, that, that this is going to succeed i want it to and i i'm i'm doing everything i can to push it out there because you want it to succeed um but if nobody uses it and nobody adopts it um then then it just doesn't become useful it just becomes it does become like a little fad or something um but We've been gr gaining adoption so much over the past couple years, I, I do not think it's going away anytime soon. Um, another thing that's really nice is, um, so it, it, you hear see articles talking about Bitcoin using a ton of power, um, which it does, but so does banking systems. And so banking systems actually use more power than Bitcoin. And the reason um, that Bitcoin's so powerful is instead of using bank servers, you're essentially using your processor and your calculators and your and your and your cell phones and your um, you know your smart TVs, your smart refrigerators, your computers at home, anything with like a motherboard and a processing chip, uh, you'll be able to to access these um, 
you'll be able to access the cryptocurrency you know network and and uh, and help mine these coins or help with these transactions or whatnot so you don't have to pay for all this land and building space and servers and people maintaining them and whatnot um, because eventually it'll be run off of the technology we're already using every single day um, so um, it that makes it you know way better than um, than what's currently being used. Um, another thing is uh, Bitcoin's open ledger, which means anybody can see what's going on with their transactions. If you want to see what's going on, um, so like for example, if we put like a pres presidential um, election on the blockchain and use and all of their donations were with Bitcoin, then um, you can see who's donating, how much, and all that stuff, and you, you can see, you know, it's a little more clear. You can also make it, I mean, Bitcoin makes it where you can vote with your cell phone, so every, but every single person in the United States, you know, could vote with their cell, or in the world, could vote with their cell phones, and it's, and you know, it's legit them. Um, and, uh, and I guess, uh, last use case I'll mention, um, there's so much more, though, but, uh, Sending money should be as easy um, as sending an email. We should legit be able to just pop open our phone, type in an email address, money, send, boom, done. Um, and that's just not the way the systems are working right now. You do have systems like Venmo and you know PayPal, and um, there are some payment systems that are working like that, but um, they're getting there. Um, but it's working off the old financial system, so. Um, Bitcoin definitely is going in the right direction and I would hope that everybody would want it to succeed because the lack of accountability and the corruption that's going on currently with the financial systems is unacceptable. I mean, is unacceptable. I hope, I hope you watching this uh, completely agree with me that the system that we have is broken. I'm not saying it's, you know, everyone in it's awful and everyone's a liar and whatever, but when we put accountability in the hands of individuals, um, it doesn't, it just doesn't work. So this gives a accountability, I mean, into all individuals, so everybody can be accountable for everybody in many different instances. Now, you don't have to have an open ledger, so everybody doesn't have to see exactly what's, you know, there's ways that you can use Bitcoin differently, but I'm just saying there's so many different use cases. At any rate, I love Bitcoin. I want it to succeed. Um, I hope that you would want it to succeed as well. Um, and if you don't know about Bitcoin, I, I, I challenge you to do some research and get involved. Um, because it is something that we need as a people and I feel like outside of like Bitcoin and the internet and you know money and financial systems and whatnot uh, we've just we're we're coming to an age and unfortunately my generation isn't the people that's gonna step up I wish it was but it's not um, hopefully the next generation is going to step up and realize that all this junk that's going on this corruption in many different areas in, in our lives um, is wrong and we need to fix it um, and this is a big step into not just fixing the financial markets but so much more um, at any rate I kind of rambled on for a little bit uh, that being said I um, hope you agree with me if not um, write comments below I'd love to know what you think um, if you think it's gonna succeed if you think it's gonna fail um, if you think I'm full of crap <laughs> um, but yeah write um, comments below like and sub subscribe bell notifications I will be posting um, a lot and I don't really know what I'm gonna be posting um, but uh, I am going to be posting a lot. I, I've legitly spent the last um, like year and a half every single day an hour or two studying crypto. In fact, for like eight months, it was like four or five hours a day. I'd wake up at 4 a.m. and work until 6, until I go to work, whatever. Um, I love crypto. And if it goes down to $100, I'm still going to be invested in it. I'm still going to be pushing it. Um, and I'm still going to be wanting it to succeed. So, um, um, yeah. Um, and I will be talking about other cryptocurrency coins and stuff as well um, on this channel, cryptocurrency news. I'll, I'll be talking about, um, man, there's so many people, there's so, mu there's so much stuff wrong with the crypto space right now um, that needs to get fixed as well. But hey, we're, we're new. It's, uh, we just hit our 10th year anniversary, which is awesome. 
Uh, that being said, I appreciate you watching, and uh, yeah, like, subscribe, bell notifications, comment below, and tell me what you think, and I'll see you at the next video. Thanks.